going on? This is Jamar here, Vegas Sense. I got a new video here. I've been wanting to do this video for quite a while, but I uh, didn't have one of the fragrances to actually do the video for. So I finally just went to Sephora a few days ago, picked up a, a sample of it. And so I'm ready to go with um, this video here. So pretty much this video, I'm gonna be comparing the uh, EDT, the EDP, and the Parfum versions of Dior Sauvage, which, you know, most people know Dior Sauvage right now is probably one of the most popular fragrances out there for men. Um, it's pretty affordable when it comes to fragrances, and, you know, it's universally well-liked, I would say, by the majority uh, of people. So, pretty much, what are the differences between the three? So there are a lot of different, uh, you know, aspects of all three of these fragrances. The EDT, when you first spray the EDT, that one is very sharp, is out there. You know, it, it's something that's gonna push out and grab people's attention. The EDP, when you first spray that on, it smells for the most part just like the EDT, except it's not as sharp, it's a little bit more rounded off, a little bit more smoother. Um, I believe that comes from you know the vanilla that's in that's added into the uh, EDP, which vanilla is not in uh, the original Dior Sauvage. And then the, for the Parfum, the Parfum is even more smoother, more well-rounded, I would say, in, in terms of smell, not sharp at all. It still does smell like a synthetic fragrance, which all three versions of Dior Sauvage smell, you know, extremely synthetic. Uh, you know, the, the bergamot that you get in the top notes for all of these, is not a natural smelling bergamot at all but it's it still smells really really good you know um, the way that they uh compose all three of these fragrances i would say is is done really well uh the difference though with the parfum like i said is that one is a lot more smoother well rounded off and that one also does have some vanilla in it as well, I believe is uh, as one of the base notes. But then it also has some sandalwood in the mid, uh, which I think helps round that smell off as well. And honestly, in my opinion, I would say that in terms of overall smell, so not performance or anything like that, but just in terms of how each one of these fragrances actually smell i would have to say that the parfum version is hands down the best smelling version of dior sauvage um, even better i would say than the edp you know the edp it does still have a little bit of sharpness there um, that the edt has and it's you know a little bit more well, I guess, I guess I can't say a little bit more embroxin heavy because the Parfum version actually doesn't have embroxin in it at all. So you do still get some of that embroxin smell with the EDT, or I'm sorry, the EDP. It's just not as heavy or as prevalent as the EDT. Whereas with the EDT, once this dries down, that's pretty much all you get with the EDT. It's just pretty much just straight up Ambroxan. With this one though, this one has, I would say, you know, more of a base to it, you know, more, more character. And, you know, again, just a, a better overall smell. Now, again, in terms of performance, the, in my opinion, I think that the, the EDT is definitely the best when it comes to performance. Now for longevity, I feel like I get pretty much about the same when it comes to longevity between the EDT and the EDP. Uh, so, I mean, it pretty much, if I spray that on, it's pretty much like an all day fragrance. Um, it, you know, it's definitely something that will last on me throughout the whole entire day. Uh, and it doesn't really matter what the temperature is with the, with those two either. 
So it doesn't matter if it's super hot or it doesn't matter if it's sort of, you know, cool and mild. Those will sort of last on me, I would say at least a good nine hours or so. Um, with the, with the, e with the Parfum, I did notice that I was able to get nine, 10 hours or so. So, I mean, the longevity is definitely there with this one, but the problem is, is this sits so close to the skin and it, it, it becomes so light, you know, on you, whether you're spraying it on skin or on clothes, it becomes so light that you really, really, really have to dig in and try hard to really try and smell this. And I really feel like this is something that unless somebody probably like got, you know, gave you a hug or something like that, it's a fragrance that nobody else would smell on you. Um, you know, the, the sillage with this one, it's pretty much non-existent. I would say after probably about the first hour to hour and a half or so, um, and that's pretty much after that. That's when it stops projecting as well. Whereas the the sillage on this one is definitely, I would say, less than the EDT, but not by that much. Um, you know, this one is still because it has still has that ambroxan in it. You know, again, this one still performs almost as good as the EDT does. It just doesn't push out as far, I would say. Uh, but again, the Parfum, it doesn't push out at all. And I mean, I would say that this fragrance, I wasn't able to really enjoy this one because, I mean, after I would say maybe about four hours or so, this was something that I really, really could not smell on me. Um, I did come home and take a shower, you know, after a day's work or whatever yesterday. And when I got in the shower, as the water and the steam started to hit my skin and stuff like that, I did sort of catch, you know, whiffs of it before I washed it off. But before that, I, I couldn't smell it on me at all. And it's really a shame because the, like I said, the smell of this is definitely, it's better than the EDT and the EDP. You do smell, when you first spray this on, you do smell how much more concentrated uh, this particular fragrance is. Um, I, I sort of liken it to, you know, the difference between like uh, Blue de Chanel EDT and EDP, where, you know, the EDT and the EDP are, you know, they're, they're a lot more sharper, they project more, but the uh, Parfum version, it, it it has like the most well-rounded, upscale, uh, you know, smoothest smell, I would say. But even with Blue de Chanel Parfum, even though that one sits closer to the skin, I would say that it still it still pushes out maybe just a little bit less than Sauvage EDP. So it, it is still something that pushes out and projects pretty decently, I would say, at least for about the first probably two hours or so, hour and a half, two hours. And then once it starts to die down, it's still something that you get whiffs of throughout the day. This was, I mean, this honestly, it really wasn't. I would say after that first hour and a half of the very light projection that this had, this was something that I would only get whiffs of if I really kind of like dug into my shirt like that and really tried to look for it, all right? So in terms of who should buy which fragrance, I would say, the EDT and the EDP are really for anybody. So if you are someone that just wants to smell good, um, you know, and you just want like a, a sort of all purpose, all year round type of fragrance, uh, the EDP I would say would probably be best for all year round use, but the EDT is still good for that. 
as well, I would just say that the EDT is probably a little bit better for the summertime as opposed to the winter. Um, so yeah, man, those two are, are definitely best for that. I would say the EDP is, it's a little bit more work safe than the EDT is, although you can definitely still over spray the EDP for sure. Uh, but you know, it does push out a little bit less than the EDT. And then I would say the ED or the Parfum version of Dior Sauvage, that one is gonna be the version that someone would buy if they don't like strong fragrances or they may be working in an environment where uh, fragrances aren't really allowed that much or maybe you've got you know people who are allergic to fragrances or something like that. I would say that's where the Parfum version would be a good choice. Uh, or for somebody that just doesn't want attention from the, the scent that they're wearing, and they want it to be something that's really personal and close to them. That's what I would say that the Parfum version would be best for. Um, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even recommend the Parfum version for like a date, honestly, because, you know, I think unless that date is like hugging you the whole night, they're not gonna smell it. And it's really a shame because again, this is really, this is the best smelling version of Dior Sauvage. I just wish that it performed a little bit more like how Blue de Chanel Parfum did, all right? So in terms of price, the Parfum version goes for uh, one, 150, I believe it is. Um, the Eau de Parfum goes for like 110 to 120. Um, and these are for the 100 mil sizes. And then I believe the uh, EDT goes for about 90, 95 or something like that. Might even be less now. So let me, let me know what you all's favorite version of Dior Sauvage is, especially if you smell all three. Um, I would have to, on a scale from one to 10, I would have to rate the Parfum version of Dior Sauvage a uh, seven out of 10. And I would say the only reason why it gets a seven out of 10 is because the overall smell of it is the best out of all three. Um, if that was not the case, this would definitely be more like a five or a six, all right? So this one I'm, I'm gonna have to say is a hard pass. It's not worth the price. Um, if you're looking for a Dior Sauvage, definitely go with the EDT or the EDP. All right. So that's Jamar here, Vegas Sense. I'll see y'all in the next video.